Hi, Seattle kindergartners and first graders. My name is Miss Derry, and I work at a little school in Southwest Seattle called Sanislo Elementary. And I just want to take a second and shout out to all of the Sanislo superstars that are with us today. I help to teach mathematics to kindergartners, first graders, and second graders. And I want to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. First, we'll gather and create our materials to use. And then we will play a game called One, Two, Three, Nim. We're going to do an activity called What's Missing. And we're going to introduce the 10 frame into that activity just to challenge ourselves. The last thing we're gonna do is take a look at um, a couple of 10 frames and decide, are they the same? Are they different? And how do we know? So we have a lot of fun things in store for us. I will see you in just a second. Okay, mathematicians, let's talk about what we're gonna need to do our work today. We're going to need two sets or two groups of something that we have around the house. Today, I'm going to be using pennies and rocks. You could use macaroni if you have that laying around the house or really anything that you have um, 10 of. We're also going to need some paper and a pencil because we're going to make ourselves a 10 frame. And I'm going to show you really quickly how to create this 10 frame. We're going to take a blank sheet of paper, any size will work. We're going to draw a giant rectangle on it. Now, if your paper is smaller, then your rectangle will be smaller. If your paper is bigger, your rectangle can be bigger. We're going to divide the rectangle in half hot dog way. And then we're going to, going to start creating our spaces. We're going to create 10 spaces in our 10 frame. And we'll do that by making four lines vertically on our 10 frame. I'll show you what that looks like. The first line will help to create two of our spaces. The second line will create four of our spaces, two, four. And the third line will help to create our first six spaces, two, four, six. And the fourth and last line will create our last four spaces, four here, six here. So we have a 10 frame that we can work with today. The last thing that we're going to need for our work today is some number cards. Um, I've pre-made these number cards, but I'm gonna show you how we can make them together. They will be numbered zero, one, two, three, and all the way to 10. So starting with a piece of paper, I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm just gonna use one hand to press firmly on one half of the paper. And I'm gonna start at the top and use the other hand to just rip this paper into two pieces. And it's okay if it's not perfect, it will work. And then I'm going to write my numbers on my pieces of paper. Number zero, the next one will be one, two, three, four, and so on. And I'll have all of the number cards I need for today's work. I did this one right here. The last thing that we're going to need for our work today is, and this is optional, maybe a stuffy. My stuffy is called Crocky, and she will be my turn and talk partner. Okay, see you in just a second to play our game. Okay, mathematicians, we are all set up to play our game, one, two, three, Nim, except somebody is in the way. So let's move Crocky over to the side so we can see our game board. This game is 
uh, for two people, two players, and the players are going to take turns placing one, two, or three of their counters on the open spaces on the 10 frame. And the player who fills the 10 frame will win the game. So let's play a game together and see how it goes. Player one decides to play one, two, three of their markers. Player two can now do the same. They can play one, two, or three markers. Player two is gonna count the spaces on the 10 frame. Half of the 10 frame is still open, plus two spaces. Half of the 10 frame is five, and then six, seven spaces are left on our 10 frame. Player two decides to play two of their markers, leaving five spaces on the 10 frame. Player one decides to play one of their markers, and that leaves four spaces on the 10 frame. Player two says, I'll play one as well, and that leaves three spaces on the 10 frame. Player one says, I'm gonna play all three of those spaces because when I do, I fill the 10 frame and win the game. Congratulations, player one. But player two says there will be a rematch. Thank you for playing one, two, three, NIM. Hey, mathematicians, that was NIM, a really fun game you can play at home by creating a 10 frame and getting some markers, something that you can use as markers. And you'll need a partner. Okay, next on our agenda is a little activity called What's Missing? We're gonna look at the number five and we'll start there. And then we'll build on that thinking and we'll bring the 10 frame in and see if that can help create even more of a challenge for us. Okay, I'll see you in just a second. Okay, mathematicians, it's Miss Derry and I'm back and I'm all ready to play a game called What's Missing or What's Hiding. And to start this game, we're first going to count out five of one of our markers. Today, I'm using pennies and rocks. So I'm going to count out five rocks. Can you count with me? One, two, three, four, and five. And now I'm going to cover up some of the rocks and we are going to try and figure out what's missing or what's hiding. So this is the part where I say no peeking, no peeking, and I'll cover some of the rocks. Okay, let's take a look and see. We don't see five, so we know some of the rocks are hiding or are missing under my hand. But how many? And how can we figure it out? Okay, I like that idea. We can count on. So we can start at two since we see two rocks and we can count all the way up to five to figure out what's hiding. Are we ready? Let's go. Two, three, four, five. Hmm. That means that three of the rocks are hiding. And let's see if we're right. One, two, three. Excellent work. We know that two and three is five. So if we can see two rocks, we know that three rocks are hiding from us. Okay, let's try this again, but let's use the number six this time. So we'll keep our five rocks and we'll count them just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cover some of the rocks and we're going to try and figure out what's missing. 
Okay, no peeking. Okay, superstars, you can look and see. Oh, look at that. Two again. Well, we can definitely see two of the rocks. And we know we started with six rocks. So some are hiding. Some are missing. And they're under my hand. Let's figure out how many. How do you think we should do this? Okay. Okay, we'll use the same strategy of counting on. Let's try that now. We can see two, one, two, and let's count all the way to six. Two, three, four, five, six. How many rocks do you think are missing? Yes, you are right. There are four rocks hiding or missing. One, two, three, four. Two and four more make six all together. Okay, let's give this a try. Do you remember that 10 frame we made earlier? We're going to use that 10 frame to play this game one more time of what's missing. We'll just up our challenge a little bit. So let's build the number eight on the 10 frame. Count with me as we build the number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight on the 10 frame and we have two spaces that are missing. So we know we have eight. We have a group of five, one, two, three, four, five, and a group of one, two, three. We know that five and three more makes eight. We also know that four and four makes eight. So let's figure out how we want to visualize this eight. I think I wanna try two groups of four, four here and four here. Let's count just to make sure. And we'll count by twos this time, two, four, six, eight. Okay, let's give this a try. We have eight rocks. Some are going to go missing and we're going to use the 10 frame to help us figure out how many are missing. Okay, no peeking superstars. Excellent job. Okay, let's take a look. How many rocks can we see? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. We can see four rocks and some are missing. I'm gonna scoot them off of our 10 frame for just a moment so we can see the spaces where they were just a moment ago. How many rocks are hiding or missing under my hand? Let's count those spaces. One, two, three, four, or we can count them by twos. Two, four. Four rocks are missing, and here they are. We can put them back on the 10 frame. One, two, three, four. Really nicely done. Let's give ourselves one more challenge today. Do you remember the number cards that we made earlier? We numbered them from zero all the way to 10. Let's use those number cards now. I'm gonna clear our 10 frame and I'm gonna put our number cards down, face down at the top of our board, at uh, top of our 10 frame. And then I'm going to use the number cards to figure out what number I'm going to build next. So I'm gonna turn the number card on the top over and it is seven. That means I'm going to build seven on my 10 frame. Count with me as I do that. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Now this time we're going to ask the question how many more 
to get to 10. How many more spaces on our 10 frame would I need to fill to have all 10 spaces full on the, on the frame? Okay, you say that's easy, count them. Okay, I will. We have seven and then the empty spaces are one, two, three. Three more to get to 10. That means that seven and three more is equal to 10. Excellent job. And then I'm going to put my number card at the bottom of the deck. I'm going to clear the markers off of my 10 frame and I'm going to play again. I'm just gonna take the top card and turn it over and that's going to be the number that I build. Okay, I'm gonna build 10. Count with me as I build 10 on our 10 frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we want to look and see, are there any empty spaces on our 10 frame? No, they're not. There are no empty spaces on our 10 frame. So the question we're going to ask ourselves is how many more to have 10? Oh, okay. There are no empty spaces on the 10 frame. So the answer is zero zero more to get to 10. 10 and zero more is still 10. Excellent job today. Just know that with your number cards and the 10 frame that you made and a little collection of something that you can find around your house, you can play this game at home or with a cousin or a brother or a sister or an adult in your home. It's been wonderful playing these games with you today and thank you for joining me. Okay, mathematicians, the last thing that we're going to get to do today is take a look at our two 10 frames. And excuse this um, setup I have here. I was trying to creatively come up with a way for us both to look at the same thing at the same time. So we're gonna be looking at these two 10 frames and we're going to be asking ourselves some questions. What do we notice about them? And are they the same or are they different? And I have Crocky with me here today. She's my favorite stuffy and she's going to be my turn and talk partner. So if you have a stuffy, you can turn and talk with them. Or if you have someone sitting close to you, you can turn and talk to that person or you can just talk to yourself. You can just talk it out. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm doing with Stuffy anyway, right? Okay, let's take about 10 seconds and look at our two 10 frames. Okay, really nicely done. What do we think? Are they the same or are they different? Crocky's gonna tell me what she thinks. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I've got it. Crocky says that the 10 frames are the same because they both have six markers on them and they both have four empty spaces. Okay, I see that crocky. I can see that there are some differences though. Our first 10 frame has five markers on the top and one marker on the bottom. Five and one is six. So I see that too crocky. And then over here we have three groups of two, one group of two, two groups of two, and three groups of two. 
also six, also with four empty spaces. So they have the same value, but they look different. Oh, Crocky says that's because they are two different ways to make six. Okay, thank you, Crocky. That is good information. <laughs> thank you for joining me and Crocky for the last couple of minutes that we got to spend together today. It has been such a joy and a delight to spend some time with you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful week, and keep working mathematicians. All of your teachers miss you so much, and I miss all of my students at Santa Slow. We're all sending love, and we hope to see you soon, and keep working.